Let's open our Bibles to book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 10 through 14. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 10 through 14. The title message is Marching On, Marching On. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, I either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Thank you for uh, dying on the cross and shedding your precious blood to wash away all of our sins, past, present, and future. Not of our own righteousness, nor of our own works, Lord God. It's because of you, what you did. Your grace and mercy bestowed upon us, Lord God. For we are grateful to have you in our life as our Lord and Savior. We pray that you bless the congregation today, the church ministry. Please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit so that he may preach a convicting sermon unto us Christians, Lord God. Allow us to have an ear to hear and an open heart to understand. Please keep us free from all the temptations and snares from this world. Please allow us to be focused onto Pastor Jay. Uh, We pray that you you be with the Shripes family, comfort them and fill them with the Spirit so that they they may... that they may be comforted. Please be with Pastor Kim and help him with his voice. Please allow him to get his voice back so that he may come back uh, to do the sermons onto the congregation. Lord God, I ask of this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Marching on. You know, Christian walk and Christian life is all about continuing, progressing, going forward, taking that next step, and just marching on. If you do not march on, and if you do not continuously go marching on, you become stagnant. And as Christians, when you become stagnant, that's when you fall into many, many temptations. As you get tested in your journey, as you go through trials and sufferings in your life, when you do stop and stay at a single place for a long time, what happens is that you become comfortable with your own ways. You become very complacent and you become self-absorbed. And what happens is that inevitably you stay and don't move. You know, what's the worst thing that a human being could do? Just stay still and don't do anything. You know, why do you think people, you know, they say, you know, you, you work in an office setting and a lot of times, you know, people get sick. A lot of times, people become unhealthy. Why? Because you just sit in front of your computer eight hours a day, and that's all you do, and you don't do much. But on the other hand, you know, people who's always working outside, especially in construction sites, you know, their body may be aching, but they're moving, and they're continuously pumping you know, blood to their streams in their body. So you know, they're in better shape than others. As Christians, one thing is that you know, we have many, many different things that happens in each person's life, right? You know, you lose some people, you lose your loved ones. You know, some people go to, to be with the Lord, you know, sometimes earlier than you thought. What do you do when those things happen to you? Do you just sit around, you know, lie down, you know, put your head inside your blanket, you know, cry your eyes out and just stay there day after day after day after day? Or do you march on? 
you have to move on. You know, as they say, people who succeed are those that learn from their past failures, right? As Christians, nobody's perfect. I mean, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes a mistake, and that's part of being a Christian. That's part of being a human being. However, do you stop after your failures? What do you do after you make failures? Do you march on, learn from it, and just move on? Or you dwell on it? and you know, make a self-pity party on yourself and leave a you know, whiny, you know, party pooper, wet blanket life. When you look at our verses today, it is, I mean, these are some great verses. I mean, these are one of my favorite verses out there. Look at verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forget it, right? You know, sometimes if you just forget it, it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. It makes your heart lighter. It makes you feel, you know, free, more free. I'm sure that you've done some stuff that you wish you haven't done. What are you going to do about it? It's already happened. I mean, it's, it's said and done. You can't go back to it. I mean, if we had time machine, if we could actually go back, and all of us would be a better person, perfect person, and none of us will be poor, right? You'll probably figure a way to be, you know, have a lot of money and whatnot. However, that's not the reality. Once time passes by, it's done, right? You know, once 10.30 passes by in the next couple minutes, Right? It's done. You can't go back to it. And as you look at your Christian life, don't let things that happened in the past stop you from marching on. Many times people don't do things for the Lord because of what happened in the past. I'm pretty sure you reap what you sow. For some, because of what you've done in the past, you're reaping it, uh, whether it's good or bad. And a lot of times it's bad stuff. You sow your sins to your body, right? To your life. Inevitably, you know, you have to bear those fruit. And those fruits could be large and those fruits could be small. Based on the type of sin that you committed and based on your heart as far as repenting heart. That's why it is very important that if you're not right with the Lord right now or if you are continuing to living in sin, you have to stop. You have to confess your sins to the Lord, 1 John 1, 9, so that you could reap smaller amount. Can you imagine if you have to bear the full fruit of your sins? I mean, those seeds are small, right? Apple tree, lemon tree, right? Peach tree. What happens though? Once they grow up years later, they bear many, many fruits. I mean, we eat peach, apple. They taste good, right? But lemon, lime, they're sour. I mean, how many of you guys can eat those by itself? Uh, maybe some of you. Hey, good for you. However, imagine those are your sins, right? Because of your sin, they're just bearing fruit. And there's no if and buts about it. You have to eat it. Imagine you have to eat that lemon, that lime, the whole fruit, right? Just eating, including the skin, just eating it, eating it, eating it. How would you feel? Right? Probably you can't even open your mouth anymore because it's so sour. But your sinful ways have caused you to bear so many of those fruits. So in order for you to march on, in order to really, really forget about those things, get right with the Lord first. You just get right with the Lord. You know, when we say forgetting those things which are behind, you know, it doesn't mean that you just forget it if you've done something wrong, if you commit a sin. You get right with the Lord and forget it. That's what's the step that people are missing. So if you've been a, you know, adulterer, fornicator, you've been a thief, liar, right? Committed all those wicked sins. You know, you're not going to just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to forget about it. Let's move on. 
No, you have to get right with the Lord. You have to confess your sins, you know, repent of your ways, and move on. And in order for you to make that turn, you have to get right first. If you don't get right and just keep on moving on, what's going to happen? Same thing's going to happen again. It becomes cyclical. It becomes, you know, cycle of committing same sins over and over and over. That's why you cannot march on because you're standstill. You're at the same place. Instead of you from here to that door where you should be walking and marching, you're just stuck at the same place. You take a step forward and you take a step back. You take two steps forward, you come back. You never, get, you never can even get to the middle point because you are not getting right with the Lord. So if you, you, if, when Apostle Paul said it, you know, Apostle Paul done a lot of damage, right? You know, before you know, he got saved, right? He persecuted Christians out there. Do you think Apostle Paul was like, Lord, you know, whatever I did, it's in the past, forget it, right? No. I mean, he considered himself, you know, like the, one of the, I mean, the chief of sinners, right? Why? Because of what he has done, what he had done in the past. But he's gotten right with the Lord and just moved on. But he done so much more because of what he did in his past. You should do more for the Lord because of what you did in your past. Because the Lord showing you so much grace and mercy. Many of you, including myself, we take it for granted. Especially if you've gotten saved at an early age, for many of young people here, for some, you don't understand what people had to go through to come to the knowledge of truth, people who came at a later age. And you guys are called spoiled breasts for that reason. You don't appreciate the truth that you have, the King James Bible. You don't appreciate the fact that you're in a local church. You don't appreciate the fact that you have a Bible-believing parents and brethren out there. You take everything for granted, and whenever you have opportunity to go out, go outside of this you know, fence that God has built for you, where outside of the fence is lust of flesh, the devil, right? And the, you know, the world is waiting for you to devour you. You happily go out there. You tell yourself, I need to experience something because I've been contained in this you know, environment. And what do you do? That's why many of young people who grew up inside a Bible-believing Christian church becomes adulterer, fornicator, liar, right? Lazy bums who do nothing for the Lord. Why? Because they get too complacent. They get too self-absorbed. They think everything is, you know, just it's my way or the highway. And as young people, you have to recognize that. Do you think... People who come from a background where they've been deceived by false preachers and pastors, by deceived by false doctrines, went to wrong church for long periods of time. Do you think they have the same attitude as you when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to local church, when it comes to the fellowship of the brethren? No. They appreciate it. They're more thankful for it. And they truly want to forget about what happened in the past all the sins that they've committed, and they got them right with the Lord, and they continuously and really march on. That's why it is very important for those people who's very stagnant in their Christian walk, especially those of you who grew up inside the church, you need to really look at yourself and wake up. You have to be sober. You have to be vigilant because you've been deceived by the devil all these years where Everything becomes robotic, and I'm not even sure if you understand the concept of marching on because you're just staying where you are. You're just comfortable where you are, and all you're thinking about is, you know, getting a job, going to good school, you know, maybe other people too, right? Your life is just all about, you know, making the finances, you know, making, you know, me me looking better than other people, You know, getting that dream house, dream car, you know, dream husband, dream wife. You know, I mean, that's that's the only thing on your mind. In these last days, what should be on your mind? What should you march on? 
You should have one, one single, single mentality. You know, I'm here to preach the gospel. I'm here to preach gospel of grace to many lost souls out there. I mean, that's how you march on. How are you going to take another step? Forget about all those worldly things on your mind. Take a step. And my life's goal is to preach the gospel, every creature out there. And whether it is through my testimony, whether it is through my influence, whether it is through anything in my life, I'm going to do my best for the sake of the Lord so that others can get saved. Because you are their gospel. You are the only thing that they see. Do you think many millions of people out there, and hundreds of thousands of people, thousands of people in your life, do you think they ever just go out there, those you know, rough people out there, like, okay, I'm going to read my King James Bible, and you know, I'm going to get right, and I'm just going to do this. No. They're all after their pleasure, fleshly pleasures. Yes. So you're the only one out there who can show them the light. You're the only one who can out there, like, give them hope, right? Many of them are just waiting for someone to tell them. Whether you understand it or not, those, even, you know, those bikers out there, you know, those gangbangers out there, and those righteous-looking people out there, right? Yeah. You know, all in dressed in suit and tie, you know, nice dresses. They're just hopelessly lost and they're just thinking that what they're doing is okay but you as a bible believing christian saved by grace right it's your job it's your mission to be out there and preach the gospel to every creature at any moment that's how you march on i mean if that person's out there who needs the lord are you gonna just stay there on your butt and do nothing, you're going to move. You're going to continuously move. And you march on from this person to that person to that person and that person. You continuously go. That's how you really, truly forget about what happened. Why? Because, you know, you're not going to have any contentment thinking about what happened in the past. Right? I mean, unless you're thinking about, you know, the day that you got saved, all the blessings that the Lord has done for you. Right? But how many people really think about that? No. What do you think news is all about? News is all about negativity. Right. All they talk about is, you know, bad things here and there. You know, if, if news is 60 minutes, what portion of news do you think they talk about good stuff? I don't know, maybe five minutes, right? Right? And even then, you know, probably they got a sponsorship. That's why they share that story. But rest of it is all bad. You know, there's someone dying there, someone getting shot over there, right? You know, these policymakers, you know, it's the worst ever. You know, the people that they, you know, liked in the past, no, not that they hate him now. So it's all about this wicked stuff out there. Then as Christians, think about it. Where do you really get your real contentment, right? How do you feel happy? Where is your joy, right? I mean, when you march on, if you don't have real contentment, you can't march on continuously because you're going to be crankster, yeah. right? You're going to be just cranky, right? You know? And it's not going to be a good influence to other people. And eventually, you're going to stop. When you're doing something out of your heart with joy and happiness, you could do it for a long, long periods of time, right? Let's say if, you're, if you love your parents and if your mom goes, hey, can you clean out your room? Can you clean the attic, right? Can you clean the basement? If you love your mom and you love her dearly out of your heart, you're going to put your heart into it. Probably, you know, the real good child will be like waiting until that call comes. You know, hey kid, I mean, I guess, hey son, hey daughter, it's dinner time. You lost track of time because you're doing it from your heart. When was the last time you ever worked like that, you know, did something for your parents like that, where you lost track of time? No, you're always counting your time. Like, mom, you know, can I leave now? You know, dad, can I leave now? I mean, you're done for two seconds. You're like, oh, it's too hard for me. You know, call it, right? 
tell you to take out trash and your face turns into someone who just, you know, smelled the most foul smelling thing ever, your face turns. But as Christians, that's how you are. When was the last time you lost track of time doing things of God? I mean, think about it. When? I mean, when you're reading the Word of God, did you ever lose track of time? Or you are always waiting as a kid, I have to read three chapters today. Or like, you know, some, anybody. Like, you're like, oh man. I told myself I'm going to read for 15 minutes today. And I read five minutes, but it's really, really hard. The next 10 minutes is going to be probably, it's going to feel like an hour or two. I mean, when was it? I mean, do you constantly feel like that when you're doing things of God? Um, bless his soul, right? I mean, he's with the Lord. You know, Pastor, Pastor Shrive, one of the things that they talked about was that, you know, when he was working, I mean, he, he would actually go to the work, you know, two hours before, you know, it started, or two and a half hours. Yeah. You know, just him and the security guard, him in a conference room just reading the word, get lost in the word, right? describing as if he was with David, you know, he was with Apostle Paul because he was real to him. When those things are happening in your life, I could guarantee that, you know, there's some contentment in your life because you based and your root and source of godliness is the word of God, your fellowship with the Lord, and it's not the money, just like many of the people, right? Root of all evil is what? It's love of money. I mean, you cannot forget things that's happened in the past because you think about all this financial stuff. You think about money. All you do is think about money. You know, money is needed. You know, we need it. It's a necessity. But it's, it's not something that should overwhelm your Christian life. It's not something that should be in your head 24-7. And but that's how people are. You know, godliness requirement is what? You know, being content, according to you know, first Timothy chapter six is what? You know, you should be content if you have food, clothing. That's it. In place to live, right? Which everyone has. Yeah. Then you should be content. Right? However, you're not content. Why? Because you're not in the will of God. Why? Because you love money too much. And it is something that's hindering so many, so many, so many, you know, Christians from marching on. There's money here, money to be made there. And you're, all you think about is money. I mean, outside of church, what is your purpose of living, right? What, what, why do you do what you do? Why are you who you are? Is it because, you know, of money? You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people fell because of money. A lot of great preachers and Bible believers fell because of money. Why? Because love of money is root of all evil. And you have to recognize and realize it. I mean, do I, am I content with my life? Lord has given me what I needed. So, or what I need. So am I content? Or are you always striving for your want, right? I want a bigger house. I want a bigger car, right? You know, I want better this and better that. And then how, you, how, do you, how are you going to ever march on for the Lord when you are always inundated, when you're just full of your own thoughts, trying to fulfill your lust, right? Trying to fulfill that, you know, pride and fame and power continuously by trying to get every single dollar, every little dollar. And I, I mention it over and over, right? If you're too busy to do, to read the Word of God, to come to church, to do ministry, then something's wrong, definitely. And a lot of times it's because, you know, unless you're like backslidden to the point you don't care anything about the Lord, Okay, there are people like that. But people who still want to do something for the Lord, but they're caught in between. And they're like, okay, I need to support my family. Yes, you do. Especially as a man of the household, you do need to work hard and you do need to support your family, right? Yes. 
And as a man, if you don't work, you know, shame on you. Yes. I mean, that's what happened. Carnal Christians, yep. right? If you don't work, you should not eat. Right. That's how Apostle Paul said, right. right? So working is important, but there needs to be balance, yes, sir. right? There yes. needs to be balance. Work hard, but that shouldn't be your number one priority in life. Your number one priority is marching on for the Lord by preaching the gospel. And how are you going to preach the gospel to every creature if your knowledge does not grow? I mean, how are you going to witness to you know, all those different people out there if you don't study? Right? If someone comes out to you and says that Jesus is not God, what are you going to do? No, Jesus is God. And then what? You know, what you gotta do like that's, and then you you're gonna talk louder than that person. Jesus is God, you know, and then you just start having a screaming match. Or are you gonna show from the Word of God why Jesus is God, yes. right? Deity of Christ. You know, God was manifest in the flesh. First Timothy three sixteen, plain right there, and you could find many verses, including you know First John chapter five. You, know? you have to do something different in your life. You have to change your priorities. You have to change the direction that you're going. If you don't constantly check on a daily basis, if you don't think about Philippians 3, 13 and 14, you're always going to stray away. Because world is too powerful. Your flesh is too powerful. The devil is too powerful. So if you're not focused on Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not focused on the fact that I'm here to preach the gospel to every creature, I continue to march on, then what's going to happen? It gets tiring. It gets very, very tiring. So what do you do? You just sit and you just relax and do nothing. Conviction. I mean, think about it. Do you think you could do much for the Lord sitting on your couch 24-7? Do you think you could do something for the Lord, you know, just on your phone 24-7, right? Do you think you could do something for the Lord, you know, all you're doing is just lying on your bed thinking about doing something for the Lord? (laughs) Uh Because too many people, uh they they think, like, that's a good thing. You know, because there are certain religions where, you know, when you think about certain things, it counts as a quota. But it's it's not... Christian work doesn't work like that, especially according to the Word of God. You could think about uh, prayer is different, right? Yes. Prayer is different. And usually, you know, you don't pray on your, you're lying down, you know. I mean, maybe you do here and there, but it's, that's not your normal way of praying. Usually you're on your knees, you know, you know praying to the Lord. You're sitting down. And you're not lying down on your bed, you know, tweeting your thumbs and, you know, Lord this and Lord that. I mean, you show basic respect, right? So, obviously, you're spending and wasting too much time on needless things in your life. Then you have to eliminate it. Get right with the Lord. I mean, if you spend too much time on your phone, social media, or whatever it is, right? Looking at, I mean... This is a dangerous thing that a lot of, lot of new Christians do. Like trying to look at every single doctrine out there. You don't need to. It's only going to confuse you. Right. Yes. right? You don't need to go to like doctrine there, doctrine there. You have to be strong and grounded in the right doctrine first. Get your foundation strong. And you have you know, our YouTube channel with countless materials. Right? You know, Pastor Jin Kim, right? Pastor Mike Shrive, you know. There's also Brother Gorski's link there. There's plenty of materials there. Just go there and spend time. After you watch every single video, then you could go somewhere else, right? Which will probably take you years, right? So after you do those things, then maybe, because by that time, probably after 10, 15 years, Lord willing, you know, if the I mean, Lord's not here yet, if Lord tarries, then I'm sure that you're grounded and strong yes. in biblical, true doctrine. 
Until then, just study, stay in your lane, and then continue to learn and grow and continue to march. In the military, can you imagine? Okay, let's be extreme for a little bit. You're in, you know, North Korean army. Okay, you're in Kim Jong Un's army, and then you learn to be in a formation and walk. Can you imagine any soldier going out of the lane? He'll get shot right away. I mean, he'll be blown up right away. I mean, he blew up his family members, right? Left and right. So you as a soldier, even if it's like not, not even foot, right? You're walking straight, but if you steer away even like a few inches, him or the sum of his crony is going to catch it. And then what happens? You get caught upon and you're dead. I mean, because it's serious to them. Why is it that these things are serious to unsaved, non-believers, but it's not serious to saved believers like yourself? Why is it that it's so important for unsaved folks out there, but it's such a minute, needless thing to save people like yourself? You don't take things seriously. That's why I harbor on the beginning of the thing, right? Just like a little kid, just like a kid who grew up in the church. You take things for granted, and you're like, oh, you know, I just go on with my life. I guarantee you, you're going to make a huge U-turn. You have to make a detour because you're going to go into sin, inevitable, and you're going to either lose a few months, years, or many years serving the Lord. And it's from experience. Talk to many of the older people who did not stay in the lane, who did not march on continuously. What happened to them? They lost many, many years of their service. And those are very few unique folks who actually came back. For majority, you're gone forever. You served the Lord for a couple years, and because of your own lust, own desire, your pride, you went the other way, many of them never come back. Almost all of them never come back. Why? Because they don't go back and think about what they did wrong, get right with the Lord, forget about it, and march on. Pride makes them feel like I've never done anything wrong. Self-pity makes them, people won't accept me anymore. You know, that's all your own ideas, right? Yes. That's just you being you, you know, being a fool. I mean, why do you think that people would think you think? You know, sometimes it's, 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 I guess, that's how married people get into arguments sometimes. They think the other person has to think like you, Right? You know, if egg has to be eaten sunny side up, you think other person has to eat sunny side up. What if they like over easy or they like scramble, right? They're like, well, hash browns, you know, you have to eat with ketchup. No. You know, some people just eat it with salt and pepper, right? So it's not, not everybody has the same viewpoint as you. You have to recognize that. If you've done something wrong in the past, and you've gotten right with the Lord, that's good enough. What more do you need? Why do you need people's approval? I mean, if you have to, especially if you're amongst brethren, then talk to each other, get it, get it over with, get right, you know. Don't live with a bitter feeling for the rest of your life, you know, killing you inside. But if it's something that you could get right with the Lord, and you know for sure you've gotten right with the Lord? That's it. How do you know that that person is still harboring that you know, feeling or whatnot? It's just you. You just think too much or you're just fool. You're just letting the devil think through you over and over. Then you can't do anything for God because those thoughts precede and oversee where your goal is 
is to preach the gospel to every creature out there. If you do not get right with the Lord and if you forget those things which are behind, don't think that you could do verse 14. Let's look at Philippians 3.14. The Bible says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You're not going to press forward. You're just going to be, you know, staying and you're left behind. Then you would have really, really wasted your life. Haven't you wasted enough of your years already? Whether you're young, whether you're old, every minute is precious. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Why do you think those verses are there, right? Because you and I have wasted so much of God's time. So we have to actually buy time now and do something for the Lord, the days that we've wasted. Amen. Think about it. Amen. Do you think that you've done enough for the Lord after you got saved? Do you think that you do enough for the Lord on a daily basis? Amen. Do you think that you're good enough? I mean, if you do, you know, shame on you, man. I, mean, I wouldn't ask you the question, uh, who, who's humble, because your hand's going to go up. Oh, you know, I'm good, I'm humble, you know, I could, I've done enough for the Lord. You know, no, no one does. That's why when you see great preachers out there, evangelists, missionaries, you know, great man of God, you know, woman of God, what do they do? They always want to buy time. They want to redeem time. Because in their heart, in their mind, they realize that, man, I've wasted so much time. And I mind you. These are actually people who try to live really holy and godly, and they feel like that. But however, that's the truth. The closer you are to the Lord, the closer you are to the Lord, you know, more real the Word of God is to you. Amen. Word of God is not real to you, it's simple. You're not close to the Lord. You're a backslider. I mean, when we read these verses, does it really hit you? Is it really personable to you? Or he said some distant words, just words, just in a book. I mean, this book is alive. Yes. I mean, this is the Word of God. Yes. I mean, Word of God never comes back void. Right. I mean, that's why we preach, whether a person gets saved or not. Yes. Because Word of God will have eternal, everlasting effect on them. If they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, heaven forever. Reject Jesus Christ, hell forever. Yes. That's how powerful the word of God is. Then, how do you feel, you know, when you read the word of God, when you hear the word of God, right? Does it really hit you? Is it really personal but to you? Do you think you ever get to a point where you get lost in time doing things of God? Reading the word, witnessing, you know, preparing for whatever it is, Bible study, preaching. I hope you have, and I hope you will. Because if you don't, in your Christian walk, where your real contentment comes from being godly, being, you know, in the right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, then you'll never have a real contentment. Forget about forgetting the past. Probably it would have been better for you, you know. Save is number one. But I guarantee you think that, you know, it would have been better for me if I never knew about Bible-believing church. It would have been better for me if I didn't go to a Bible-believing church. Because there are people who actually think like that. They're like, you know what? My life was good. I didn't have to worry about money. My marriage was good. Kids were doing well. But once I went to, you know, Bible Baptist Church International, once I learned about King James Bible, you know, my life went down the to toilet, right? It's like everything just fell apart, right? I wish I just could go back. Yeah, yeah, try to go back, you know. First of all, time has passed by, you can't go back. And what's good, what good is it when you just, you know, have a, you know, regrettable, remorseful thoughts, wasteless thoughts, thinking about what happened in the past? I mean, do you truly think that you're in a better place or you'll be in a better place without the right Bible, 
without the right church, without the right doctrine, you're fooling yourself. You're, you'll be deceived by the devil and at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be just regretting and you'll be in, you know, so much shame. Just thank God that you're safe if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and Him alone. Thank God that God has shown you the truth through the King James Bible. Amen. Thank God that you are in an actual Bible-believing local church where hundreds of thousands, if millions of people who, don't, who do not have opportunity to go to. And be thankful and just be like Apostle Paul. Forget about what happened in the past. Get right with the Lord and just press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You march on yes. with the one goal, right? You're marching on to preach the gospel. Yes. Just keep on going. Keep on going. There's going to be attacks. It could be your family. It could be your you know, co-workers. It could be the world. You'll be the devil. You'll be your flesh. Don't let him stop you. You continue to march on. And when you finish, wouldn't you ever want to hear these words from the Lord? Well done, that good and faithful servant. Amen. And at the end of the day, if the Lord finds you and I as a faithful servant, that would be the greatest honor. Yes, Let's pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we sometimes we forget that we need to march on. You know, we get stagnant and we just stay at the same place. And don't go anywhere. Even worse, we just go backwards. We think about things of the past. What could have been? What would have? Lord God, you know, if it's not useful, Lord, help us to just you know, confess our sins, get right with you, and forget about it, and just press toward. Just go forward, marching on. We don't have time in these last days to just waste it, Lord. Think about worldly things, you know, think about fleshly things and devilish things, Lord God. There are so many souls out there on their way to hell. And they need your gospel, Lord. And we have that gospel. And it's our goal, Lord, to preach the gospel to every creature. I mean, in this, during these crazy times out there, with pandemic and uh, vaccine or everything else going on, we have so many useless stuff. You know, people are wasting their time on, Lord God. Help us to just concentrate just one thing, just pleasing you, and just preaching the gospel, Lord God. I pray that, you know, if any one of us are not saved, who's here and who's listening, Lord, I pray that they'll get saved, Lord. Uh, you said, now is the day of salvation. I mean, if you don't get saved right now, you don't know what's going to happen. I pray that, you know, you just, everyone will just realize there are sinners on their way to hell and accept Christ and Him alone as their Savior and get saved from hell. And that's why we preach, Lord God, and help us to be bold and courageous for You as a soldier of Jesus Christ and just forget about those things and don't let them hinder us from marching on, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.